Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, today we will talk about um, certain derivation of the famous Einstein formula m is equal to c, c squared which basically specifies the energy which is concentrated in any amount of mass m. c is the speed of light. So we will try to derive this formula through a slightly different avenue. We will use classic Newtonian mechanics principles and the knowledge which we have obtained by researching electromagnetic uh, oscillations because light is electromagnetic field oscillations. So this lecture will be very heavily related to um, the lectures about electromagnetic field uh, waves especially the lecture which is dedicated to momentum of light. So, before you uh, watch this lecture, if you did not go through the electromagnetic field waves part uh, of the course, I do suggest you to do that, because I will just use the formula from that part of the course. and. Uh, this formula basically directly um, related to E is equal to mc square. And my personal feeling is always I want to know why that particular formula exists. So if you are satisfied with basically just taking the formula from that theory which we were, which we were presenting in, uh, in, the, in the waves um, part of the course, well, that, that, that's fine, but I think if you want to go deeper, you really have to know that part of the course. And again, the, everything in this particular um, course, or courses actually, is interrelated, and it's built into a sequential system of presentation of knowledge, which is basically guided by the website unizor.com. So I suggest you to basically work with the uh, website, use all the material which is presented in there. So right now we are in a course called Relativity for All. Now the electromagnetic waves, all this will be was presented in the uh, course called Physics for Teens. There is also Math for Teens course on the website, which is basically a prerequisite for. Uh, for the physics. You cannot really uh, study physics without knowing mass. Calculus and vector algebra are must, basically, for, for doing this. Okay, so that's kind of a preamble, and uh, let's talk about this famous Einstein formula about the energy equals to mc square. Energy which is concentrated in any kind of a mass, doesn't really matter which one, whether it's the uranium or, or air or water. Whatever mass is, it always carries energy, basically, and this is the amount of total energy which is carried by this particular mass. That was a famous uh, achievement by, by physics uh, of the beginning of the 20th century, and Einstein in particular, obviously. So, what am I going to use? First of all, I will use the uh, concept of momentum. From the classical physics, momentum is mass times uh, speed. Okay, that's basically a definition of momentum, and we all know the second law of Newton, which is basically relating force with acceleration, which is actually, well, I should use capital L in this case, which is mass times first derivative of the speed by time, which is actually derivative of mv by time, which is derivative of uh, momentum by time. Again, momentum, the same thing. So we all know this from classical 
from classical physics. Now, the thing which I would like to borrow from um, electromagnetic field oscillations theory and whatever the analysis we, we made uh, is the formula which is related energy of light with its impulse. Now, so I will just write the formula. And again, it's derived in the another part of the course. It's a course physics for teens. Uh, part is waves. Chapter is electromagnetic uh, field waves. And in that particular chapter, there are lectures about energy of light, about momentum of light, and including derivation of this formula. Actually, the formula looks a little bit differently. The way how I derived it was this one. If light does some kind of work or increment, well, it decrements its own energy by doing certain amount of work, then its impulse is, in this case, dec decremented by the same, <coughs> by the amount which is um, related to energy by this formula. Well, which basically means that the entire amount of energy inside a certain amount of light uh, is related to impulse of that amount of light by the same formula, basically, that's what it means. So amount of, when, when I'm talking about the amount of light, just consider you have a ray of light, let's say it's a cylindrical kind of light, and you just cut certain volume from it. So you have a concept of energy density. It was introduced in that course, electromagnetic uh, field uh, uh, part of the course. So it has certain amount of energy, and this, let's say, one cubic meter of light, if you wish, it has certain amount of energy. It's related to um, electric uh, intensity and magnetic intensity of the electromagnetic oscillations. All of that was covered in that part of the course. So I'm just using a final formula, which is this one. If you have certain amount of light, it has certain amount of energy, and it has an impulse. Great. Basically, just using these two formulas, I'm going to derive the energy of any mass is mass times square uh, speed of light. Now, to prove that, let's imagine some kind of a thought experiment. Somewhere in the vacuum you have two masses equal. Let's call it alpha and beta. So these two masses are at the same distance from the center, zero. So it's in vacuum, there are no external fields, uh, external forces, external fields, just nothing. Now, if it's nothing, no, nobody is moving anywhere or, or anything, everything is completely in, encompassed is within this system. Then, obviously, we should have the uh, law of conservation of momentum, law of conservation of energy, all that type of things. Among them, by the way, there is another law, which, I mean, it's obviously the consequence of the previous two laws, that the center of mass which is right now at point zero, should be basically stationary. It should not move. So if these are bodies, alpha and beta, are somehow interacting, that should not really change the uh, position of the center of mass. Because if we will change the position of the center of mass, it means that the law of uh, conservation of momentum is not uh, obeyed. So if all of a sudden these two alpha and beta become active, like moving, 
one relative to another, then whatever they're doing, the center of mass should really be at zero. Okay, now, after these obvious remarks, um, let's just do the following experiment. For example, let's say A has certain switch on and off and source of light, whatever, battery. So it's switched off, and let's say we are directing the light from A, from alpha to beta. So what happens? Well, here is what happens. Light has energy, as we know from, I was already talking about this course, about electromagnetic wave oscillations. It has then energy and it has momentum. Great. So whenever we send a signal, a light signal from alpha to beta, we are actually sending certain amount of light which has energy and momentum. Now, how do we preserve the momentum which is supposed to be conserved? Well, obviously, this mass should recoil. So whenever we send something, well, you, you just think about it this way. If you just throw something like a, a stone from here to there, obviously, if we are in vacuum, if you are in a spaceship, you are inside spaceship. So it's very inertial system, as inertial as it can be. If you throw, if one person throws, let's say, a towel to another person, obviously the first person recoils. Now the second person will wait until the towel comes to it. And when it comes to it, it will also go a little bit further. It will uh, go with certain speed and two people will actually start going away from each other. So if this person throws a towel to this person, first this goes, recoil, and this then will, when it will receive the towel, it will actually start moving to the same direction. But their center of mass will be exactly the same as it was before. So they are starting to separate from each other, but the center of mass will be at the same point. So that's exactly what's happening but it's happening here. So light goes here, so the alpha recoils here. Well, light goes with the speed c, and the mass will have some kind of a v alpha speed towards this direction. Okay, that's interesting. Now, what if this light, which carries energy, and impulse does not have any mass. What if mass is zero? I mean, we are kind of thinking about the light as having mass zero. But in this particular case, let's just think about it. If it's zero, it means this mass is going this way. Light doesn't have any mass. This mass remains stationary during this time, while light is covering this distance. What is this time? This time is equal to 2L divided by speed of light. So during this time our center of mass would move to the left, which is not supposed to happen. What does it mean? It means that the amount of light which we have issued, this signal, light itself, not only has a speed but also has a mass. Let's use lowercase m. And this guy now will have m minus m. Only in this particular case we can expect that the center of mass will remain where it is. Because we need the uh, conservation of impulse. So the impulse will be m minus m v alpha and uh, plus um, m times c should be equal to zero. Because it was zero before, it was not moving, so now it's supposed to be zero afterwards, because this bond is always stationary, doesn't change at all. 
So this is a very interesting observation, both from which we actually can conclude that the alpha is equal to minus mc divided by m minus m. All right. Now, considering the classical mechanics, if something has a mass m and speed c, then its momentum is mass times speed. At the same time, we know that this particular light carries energy e, and it's related to, s to, to the momentum like this from which follows what? E is equal to mc squared. Well, to tell you the truth is not mathematically <laughs> robust, so to speak, um, proof. Because we are using completely different kind of theories. This is from electromagnetic uh, oscillations. This is from Newtonian mechanics which is not exactly uh, in agreement with uh, Maxwell equations which describe electromagnetic oscillations. So I would consider this not to be a, like a proof, but as a kind of a trick which gives correct result. Uh, and what's most, most important that the results of the theory of relativity were uh, supported by numerous experiments but I think it's very interesting to see how easy it is to get to this formula if we use whatever I'm just using. So again, I would not really, uh, I, I, I would not really emphasize the, the way of this particular derivation as the proof. No, it's not. However, it's kind of interesting from my personal view that you can really derive this formula differently using something which is, you see, not like the whole Newtonian mechanic is wrong. There are certain things in there which we are borrowing into the relativity and rightfully so. And, you know, one of the things is probably this particular part is in correlation with electromagnetic theory, with uh, Maxwell's equations, etc. Okay, so basically that was my very quick derivation. Now I would like to talk about something which is just purely uh, technical things related to this. I would like to basically prove that our center of mass is always at the same position. Now, how do we do this? So we know that this is the law of movement of the uh, alpha. So the x alpha is equal to minus L, that's the beginning, and then I should add time times uh, speed. So that's negative, so it's minus mc, m minus m time, right? So that's the law of movement. I should really say x alpha of t. When t is equal to 0, it's minus l, it's this. And as t increasing, it goes to this way, to the left, with this speed. OK. Now, what's the uh, law of movement of my light? It's a signal, signal of t. It's equal to what? Minus L plus MC for T less than capital T. So until it hits the beta objects, right? After this, light disappears. What does it mean it disappears? Well, it's completely absorbed by beta object. And the beta object with the energy and mass of the light will start moving to the right, right? The mass will be m plus m 
and the speed would be VB. <coughs> now, what, what will be the speed? Well, the momentum, let's just leave this alone. The momentum of uh, light plus mass before their collision was m times c. After the collision, it should be the same, and it should be m plus m v beta, right? So whatever the momentum this guy has, and this one is zero right now, after their after the light is absorbed, the total mass would be m plus m, and some speed vb would be basically from here mc divided by m plus m. And what's the law for the beta? Now, before collision, that would be zero. I mean, not zero, L, I'm sorry. It would be L. But after light is absorbed, it would be L plus speed times time, mc divided by m plus mt. So these are basically the laws of motion of all the components of this system. Now, what we have to prove is that that the total momentum is always exactly the same as it was before, which is zero. Well, let's just consider two different cases. For T less than capital T, <coughs> um, my um, center of momentum is, not center of momentum, center of mass, I'm sorry, center of mass. How do we calculate the center of mass. Remember, if you have certain number of, uh, let's say this is coordinates, uh, you have x alpha and you have, let's say, x beta. This is mass m1, this is mass m2. What is the center of mass? Well, you do x alpha times m1. plus x beta times m2 divided by m1 plus m2. That's the coordinate of the center of mass, right? And if you have three uh, objects, that's exactly the same thing. So, and this is something which you can just directly calculate. What is the center of mass, for example, uh, during this particular time? Well, I know this is my m minus m times x alpha plus m times x sig is of t plus m before collision. My beta object has mass m. Uh, times L. It stands still on this before collision. This is T less than T. And if you will calculate this, what will be? Well, M minus M <coughs> X alpha is L minus M C M minus M T plus um, M times plus M times this position minus L plus MC and plus ML. You will see that this is equal to zero. 
I hope. <coughs> so this is M minus M L, then minus M C T, M minus M uh, cancels out plus. M times minus L plus MC and plus ML, right? And it's supposed to be it's supposed to be equal to zero, am I right? M minus M is alpha. M alpha M minus M times M C. Okay. Mass times minus L plus no, this is wrong. Okay, C. It's C T. Yeah, that's what's wrong. Speed times time. Yeah, I don't know why I put my mess here. Um so what do we do here right now? Um, and by the way, this is minus L. That's another mistake which I made. No, I mean this way. Okay, so many little mistakes. Yes, this is minus L. And this is minus, okay. Now, is it zero now? Um, ML with a minus, with a plus, so that would reduce this one. Minus with plus ML, plus ML, and minus ML, minus MCT, and plus MCT. Yes, that's zero. So as we see during the T less than T, we do have a zero as a center of mass. Now, if you will do exactly the same without any small mistakes, which I did, for t greater than t, then you will have to take into consideration this piece as well, and you will have zero. Now, every lecture has video part and textual part on the website unisor.com, and on the textual part I do all this derivation much more accurately than I'm doing right now and everything is fine. It goes to zero, everything is okay. So that's it, basically. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. They are kind of more like a textbook style. But after I was trying to explain something orally, maybe it would be better for you to uh, look at the, at the text itself. And good luck. I suggest you to uh, maybe, maybe repeat the electromagnetic waves oscillation part of the course, Physics for Teens. That would actually be much, much more useful. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>